Hello dreamers, this is Sue from Homestead Dreamers and I'm in my kitchen. Today I'm going to attempt to recreate a childhood memory, Boston brown bread. I grew up in upstate New York, New England area, very near the Vermont border, and I remember my mom serving us Boston brown bread with raisins. Sometimes she made it herself in a coffee can and sometimes she would find it at the store and buy it and we'd open the cans and slice the bread and it was so good. So come on back with me and we'll attempt to make what I remember a delicious Boston brown bread. for the Boston brown bread. I have one cup of all-purpose flour, one cup of rye flour, one cup of ground cornmeal, finely ground cornmeal. I have a cup of molasses. I have one teaspoon each of sugar, allspice, baking powder, and baking soda. I have two teaspoons of vanilla. I have two cups of buttermilk and you can make your own by adding uh, two, a tablespoon of vinegar to every cup of milk you have. So this is two tablespoons of vinegar and two cups of milk. And I have a cup of raisins. Now the recipe calls for a one poundish size coffee can which I did not have and of course you want to find the cans that don't have the BPA in them. I have these cans which are shorter and rounder than coffee cans but they'll work and uh, this is a double recipe it was supposed to make two coffee cans these are I'm not sure how they're going to fill up um, volume wise so I have four of them and they're well buttered you're going to need aluminum foil and you can make it on top of the stove or you can make it in the oven I'm going to make mine in the oven steaming it and I'm going to be using a uh, roasting pan with a rack and we'll be back to start mixing up the Boston Brown Okay, we're about to mix up our dry ingredients. I'm putting in the all-purpose flour, the rye flour, the cornmeal, salt, baking soda, baking powder, and allspice. And I'm going to be adding the raisins at this time, too. I can whisk that the raisins might clog up my tines a little. There we go. I'm gonna take this pan off the table so it doesn't make as much noise while I'm mixing. There we go. All right, once we get this well combined, trying to get all the seasonings through all the flour, then we'll be adding our wet ingredients. in another bowl, buttermilk, vanilla, and add the molasses. Don't you love the smell of molasses? 
Mm, reminds me of Christmas with molasses cookies. Oh, smells great. You know what goes good with this Boston brown bread or Boston baked beans? Up in New England, they're served together a lot. And they have been since colonial times, and they were probably served together in England before that. We get that nicely combined. Oh, it smells so good. Alright, and now we will combine the wet and the dry. Mix those until they're evenly combined. Mmm. Okay, that looks about right. You don't have to over mix them, just make sure everything looks wet. And now, we will fill our cans. I'm thinking it might work to use this. Yeah, it looks like it'll work, doesn't it? And I'll get my ladle. Use my canner funnel. And you're supposed to fill these about two thirds full. So, seeing how I'm using different size cans, I'm just going to have to eyeball it and see how far this batter is going to go and how many cans I'm going to need. That's about half full. That might be two thirds. Even I guess four scoops each, which is two cups. I think this is a half cup scoop. I think I got a clump of raisins here. Break them up. I'm telling you, this smells so good. It smells like I'm baking Christmas cookies. Okay, so it looks like I'll be using three of these cans. They're just about even. Alright, the next thing you do is you cover them tightly with foil because they're going to be steaming to cook. I have a big pot of water boiling on the stove that I'm going to use to fill the roasting pan with water when I put it in the oven. We'll make these kind of tight because you want them to hold the steam in there to cook it. And if the oven 
is to be heating to 325. And it's going to bake a long time. It's, it's going to steam for 2 hours and 15 minutes. And we'll be back to put that in the oven. My oven has heated to 325. I've got two pots of boiling water on top of the stove. I've put my three cans on a rack in the roasting pan in my stove. And now I'm going to put the boiling water in the pan up to one third the way, one third the way up of the cans. that's quite one-third so I'm gonna boil a little more water and we'll be back all right I'm adding more boiling water to bring the level up to about a third that's about right and we'll close up the oven and we'll, we'll set the timer for two hours and 15 minutes and then we'll come back and check the meat the bread All right, our timer's going off. Now it's time to check the bread and see if it's done. Let me remove a foil. And I should use a toothpick for this, but I don't have one, so I'll be using a butter knife. I think that is done. Looks good. There's the bread. So we'll turn the oven off. We'll take these out, let them cool slightly, and we'll cut into one and let you see what we have. Now, here comes a little scary part taking the bread out of the can. I was a little worried because of the ridges in the can that it might not come out easily. Well, the knife, oh, it looks like it will. The knife goes around nice. Let's see if I can encourage it. Ah, there it is. Perfect. Okay, there's our brown bread. Let me get a better knife for slicing it. Maybe I should wait till it cools a little. You know how bread mashes down when it's too warm. But this seems to slice nicely. My husband loves brown bread. He should be home soon. Let's see if I can slice a little piece for me to try. It's hot. Mmm. You can really taste the molasses. Mm. You can taste the corn. Very nice brown bread. Yeah, even cool, this will be lovely. So, I think you should give this a try. Boston brown bread. One of my childhood memories. Mm, and it's good. <laughs>